this session of Thoughtful Cooling, we're going to understand the physics and the processes that allow for heat to come in and out of the building or get stored, leading to thermal discomfort or comfort for its occupants. Let us now try to acquire a more rigorous technical understanding of heat transfer. Heat transfer can be understood through two sub-components. One is the movement of heat and the second is the storage or the presence of heat in a space. Perhaps we all agree that the traditional goal of building design has always been to keep people comfortable. This one single-minded objective has defined architecture of the modern era. However, to be able to do thoughtfully designed buildings or do thoughtful cooling, we would like to suggest that the students or whoever the person is in, uh, interested in gaining this knowledge should perhaps expand the definition of or the objective of building design to include thermal and visual comfort at the same time using the least amount of energy. The reason why we mention thermal and visual comfort simultaneously is because there are often trade-offs involved in trying to achieve thermal comfort and visual comfort. For example, if you had large windows spanning the entire height of a room, that would give you great visual comfort. It will give you a great view of the surroundings. While that might be desirable, it also brings in certain undesirable thermal effects into play. For example, the amount of solar heat gain that the room then is subjected to, which therefore escalates the amount of electricity consumption from the air conditioning. Therefore, we suggest that the definition of building design or thoughtful building design be expanded to include both thermal and visual comfort and at the same time minimize energy consumption. A central idea that helps us understand buildings as a physical entity similar to the human body is the idea that the human skin pivots in terms of its comfort sensations around the temperature of 37 degrees. It's a commonly known temperature for the human core or the human body's core temperature. This temperature defines the range of comfort that an occupant will feel in a building. For example, a room that is much higher than your body temperature, say a room that is at 40 degrees in terms of its uh, temperature of the air, will make the occupant feel very uncomfortable. Similarly, a room that is at a much lower temperature than the human body temperature, for example, 20 degrees, will create thermal discomfort of another kind, which is too much cooling present in the room. Here is a diagram which indicates the very natural processes a human body undertakes to maintain that benchmark level of 37 degrees for functioning of all its metabolic processes. For instance, when a body is placed in a very warm environment, it undergoes a set of activities, for example, perspiration, which allows the human body to lose heat through evaporation of water on its surface, thereby cooling it, or for example, somehow promotes the movement of air, or we do something to promote movement of air over our skin to promote convective cooling, for example, switching on a fan. Another mechanism would be to lose the body heat through radiation. For instance, when you roll up your sleeves in a hot space, your skin is then able to radiate its heat to the surroundings, thereby cooling you. On the other hand, when the building or when the person rather is placed in a cold environment, the body needs to undertake certain processes to remain at 37 degrees if the outside temperature is much lower. One way of doing this, for instance, is to reduce the amount of heat that we dissipate through radiation, rolling down your sleeves, buttoning up your shirt, for instance. All this prevents radiation of your body heat to the outside so that you conserve it. Another way of doing this is to, for your body to allow its hairs to be risen 
so that convective heat transfer, if there is movement of air, is blocked because of the barriers to convection. Shivering, a very well-known phenomenon that we all undergo through, so that it creates metabolic activity and creates dissipation of energy within the body so that we feel warm all around. The previous slide indicated how the human body is, in a way, a physical entity that undergoes processes of physics to keep warm or cold. Similarly, a building functions or should function rather to undertake certain natural processes to keep the occupants inside at a relatively comfortable temperature throughout the year. To promote this or to enable this rather, the building needs to exchange heat inwards outwards to be able to achieve that equilibrium and this creates an analogy between the human skin and the skin of the building just like the human skin lost heat or gained heat depending on what its needs were a building should be able to promote the same therefore we can start thinking of the building skin as being a representation of the human skin and similar processes can be applied there as well. In this instance, we'd like to discuss the idea of a building being exposed to sunlight in the daytime and think about how heat will transfer either in or going out of this building. Naturally, without even knowing too much about conduction, convection, radiation, the classical heat transfer processes, it is quite intuitive to imagine that heat will flow from the outside to the inside of a building in a summer, uh, summer weather condition or in a tropical region. This indicates the direction of heat transfer. In a few slides, we'll discuss why this happens in this direction and why not in the opposite direction. Conversely, in the night time for the same building, because the outside temperature is lower than the temperature inside the building, the building will start losing heat spontaneously as long as there is a temperature gradient in this direction. Therefore, one must understand and embed this deep into the understanding of this phenomenon that a building does not need to just stop heat transfer. This is very often thought to be the goal of building design in tropical climates such as ours. The goal rather is to promote the two-way transfer of heat depending on what the inside and outside conditions are. It is a two-way process rather than just a process of blocking heat from coming in as indicated here. Let's look at now certain processes or design features that could be embedded in the building envelope or the skin of the building to promote or impede this heat transfer process. For instance, a thermal barrier or a selective thermal barrier, one that allows heat to come in when it is advantageous and one that prevents heat from coming in when it is disadvantageous would serve the purpose of promoting or impeding heat transfer. To deepen our understanding about heat transfer, we would now like to understand the three primary processes which are separate and distinct from each other, which are involved in the process of heat moving from one place to another. The first one that we will address is called conduction, then we will understand convection, and finally, we will understand the principle of radiation. All of these processes, as you can see, are bi-directional processes. Each could be used to gain heat or to dissipate heat depending on the outside and inside weather conditions. In the real world, these processes are not just abstract notions, they actually happen through almost every part of the building envelope. For instance, you can have an opening in the roof of your building with a small chimney which promotes 
convective heat transfer. Another way of losing or gaining heat could be through your walls which are made out of brick, cement or any other construction material. These become sources of conduction heat transfer. Glass windows and other openings which allow direct sunlight to come in are sources of radiant heat transfer. Similarly, they can also become ways of losing heat through radiation. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, on our email addresses or through our portal fairconditioning.org. Thank you. Thank you.